Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to talk about when it's time to move away from stock pencil style ignition coils to aftermarket coils. So this is a stock ignition coil, good for about 600 wheel horsepower. Once you exceed about 500 wheel, these aren't necessarily reliable. They can make up to 600 wheel, but then they're just gonna burn out really quickly. And it doesn't make a lot of sense to rely on these beyond 500 wheel, which typically would mean when you have aftermarket turbos. So if you're trying to decide, should I consider these coils? If you're preparing on upgrading your car to beyond 500 wheel, you really should. Or rather than buying another set of Bosch coils, uh, may make sense to just go with these if you're making about 450 wheel, pushing your stock turbos on a stage two plus tune with ethanol, etc. In my case, I kind of cheaped out originally because I was doing fine with stock coils at around 450 wheel, maybe 400 wheel even. And I went for these because they have a lifetime warranty. So even though they'll fail often, um, I can get them replaced, no problem. So I did that and I've actually gone through three sets of these, funny enough, in just less than a year. So they're not the best and they're not going to make more than, they don't support more than 500 wheel. You'd have to stick with the Bosch coil. So I'm just doing this because I'm not gonna go ahead and, and keep changing these out. It's not gonna hit my power goal and I don't wanna switch back to Bosch coils. That makes no sense considering what they cost and obviously for content for you guys. But to throw it out there for you guys on a budget, if you go to your auto zone and buy these and you're just making maybe like 350, 400 wheel, you know, you only have to buy them once. This particular kit is from Spool Performance, the same company that makes the overdrive high pressure fuel pump system. So to the key now, you may say, well, this kind of looks like a other company solutions. This bolts onto your valve cover, and then you place these coils on there. So just to put something out there real quickly, the reason I'm doing this video, I got them at a discount, but I didn't uh, work on any type of affiliate marketing or anything like that. I'm just giving you guys information that's gonna save you money. So I did get them at a discount given I'm making this video, but I'm excited about this because it's gonna save you guys like 20% off of what the market rate is for a solution like this. And I'm gonna have to go into some technical differences. Let's just say that taking what they call an LS style or LS1 style coil, and putting it on a metal bracket and sticking it on top of your valve cover is nothing revolutionary. So this is an LS1 style coil made primarily from what I can see for GM cars or Corvettes. And then, you know, this became a popular coil. It's considered dumb. I'll go into that in a little more detail shortly, but there you go. Show me that there's any difference with this. It's an off the shelf coil meant for a GM. It's got good power and it doesn't need any type of fancy electronics to drive it. Does that look like other manufacturers offerings? This is just a no name, but yeah, it does. But there's nothing special about that. And that's the whole point. Spool is actually more interested in the fueling side and performance and tuning, not so much ignition only, but they did put together a kit. They are based out of Houston. I did meet up with the owner and talk to him a little bit about what this system will do, keeping it frank really short it's going to save you guys money so the market uh, value for this they're about to be released but the msrp for these are 449 if you do send an email to them and say that you saw my video you watch vehicular diy's video uh he will give them to you for 399 and uh, i'm getting nothing out of it except you may see some future content uh because i'm gonna actually go to their shop and maybe film some stuff so it could be cool you know i'm just trying to build a relationship with them and help them sell stuff, but I'm getting nothing out of it. Just to put that out there, that's why I'm free to just give you information. I'm letting my viewers know that, by the way, there's an off-the-shelf coil. If you wanted to zip tie these to your valve cover and buy generic wires, you could piece together a kit. It's probably not worth it considering you need to make these little harnesses and whatnot, but there's nothing special about an LS1 style coil and shoving it on a metal rail. So now let's take the AEM coil. If I, I don't really know what's going on in the back end with regards to, you know, where these uh, coils are made or, or whatnot, but Spool's gonna offer a lifetime warranty on these. So you buy it once and anytime you need a replacement coil, you'll get it. So these are gonna be way more robust than a pencil style coil if you're tuned. Uh, but you know, they have a lifetime warranty from Spool. So once you buy it once, you're done. 
It doesn't mean that in, over the course of five years, you may not need to do a claim. It's not like they're, these are absolutely bulletproof coils, but they are very good and way better than stock coils. All right, so now we're gonna measure the resistance. We're going between pin A and the coil driver. You got 8.91. So this is slightly out of tolerance. This is supposed to be 8.5. You know, chances are if you buy one of these, it's gonna measure closer to 8.5. Now, if you were to take, I'm just gonna grab any random one here. What, what Spool does is he just makes sure that whatever he gets to, they're gonna be balanced across all coils. So if it measures more like 8.1 or 7.9 or 8.3, they'll match so that it's easier on your ECU as far as I understand. Let's take one of their coils and measure 8.09. And if I were to do that across the rest of these, grab a random one, it's gonna be around that range. 8.0. Nothing special, 8.03. All that means is it's you know on the better side of tolerance, closer to 7.9 rather than 8.5. So you know, good overall build, and I think he's conscious of that and and, and quality uh, checks all of them. So now, I'm not naming any names here, and I don't know where this came from, but it's just looks similar and it's generic. 8.23, you know. Just to put it out there that these do exist on the market and I'll give you a little bit more information now. So here's some info on the LS1 style AEM coil for about 60 bucks a piece, right? That's what they call this type. Anything that just bolts onto a metal rail is meant to bolt onto like a GM factory coil holder. And that's why it's an LS1 style, but they call it a dumb ignition coil because it's not going to have its own driver. It's going to take a signal from your ECU to drive and the actual power signal is generated right from a transistor on your ECU. But here's some specs and it lists that they're 8.5 rated. It's a high output. It's funny, but even AEM themselves call it a dumb coil because at the end of the day, they'd like to sell you the smart coil where you're not taxing your ECU's transistors and generating heat to be able to drive them. But it's fine for this application, obviously, because other people are doing it. There's another solution out there, R8 coils, where they'll drive the, the plug directly on the coil and it just takes a signal from the ECU and then you run a power line to the whole, all the coils. But it's still a pencil style and uh, it's not gonna be able to generate the same amount of power. Uh, I have the older MS80 ECU that uh, was on N54 cars till sometime in uh, early 2008. So this is just to help you visualize what's happening in your ECU. This is my satellite radio tuner. As you see, it has a big heat sink and whatnot, and it failed. I actually switched it out to a five series one or an early model that has a fan inside, but that is a transistor there. They're called MOSFET transistors. They drive the coil in your ECU and the early ones were known to fail if you've ever heard of uh, injector drivers failing on the ECU, you can, if you have an early one, you could upgrade your MOSFETs and then you won't have that issue. But if you have really high power coils like this and you're driving your MOSFET on an early ECU, what can happen is, uh, from what I was told, they share the same ground rail as uh, the injector drivers and then you can actually damage the injector driver and then you'll be getting misfires from your injectors because the ECU is bad and you gotta change the transistors or upgrade to an MS81. So for that reason, there's a little couple things to consider. So you could do an upgrade to MS81 or uh, what you should do if you're running less than 600 wheel is when you go into MHD, when you're flashing a tune, don't tell the software that you have upgraded coil so that it runs a higher dwell, which puts more strain on that circuit. Just leave it be, just run them off stock dwell. That way they're not driving more than they need to and because you don't really need them to create that much spark. Let's say you're single turbo making over 800 wheel and you're running the high dwell via MHD and you have an MS81 or whatever, or even your stock ECU and you're just kind of taking a risk. You can generate so much spark that you'll shatter the porcelain insulator at the end of this plug here 
and that could be a problem. So you don't want to overdo it when you don't need to. This is good for, you know, these are super solid for 600 wheel. Leave it on the stock dwell so that there's no way you'll burn out a spark plug. And you should run at least one stage colder plug if you're going to do this. And you don't have to make your gap super tight just be, because these have more power. I would say 0.19 or 0.20 should work nicely. I'm going to put a, a quick clip from my previous video where I go to two stage colder plugs and you'll see how much thicker the, the ceramic insulator is. So hopefully that helps you visualize two steps colder is going to have more protection down in that area because they know you're going to be running a stronger spark typically. So keep that in mind. Don't put these on your car unless you're going to run at least one stage colder. You can run the NGK 95770s or the 97506s, which I have now. And don't go for setting them to be known by MHD unless you're running over 600 wheel. These are perfect for 450 wheel to 550 or 600 wheel on stock dwell, I would say. And for my power goals, considering uh, what it would cost to get proper Bosch coils, it's not gonna make sense to, to not upgrade. For you guys that are considering maybe adding more uh, mods down the line and you're at 450 wheel and you're maxing out your stock turbos wouldn't hurt to put these in when one of your coils fails you're covered for the future and they're way less likely to fail anyway because they're designed to generate more spark energy they won't be strained they'll actually be chilling at 450 to 550 wheel so going over the kit really quickly it's completely plug and play in terms of the connections to your coils comes with a bracket that you mount on your valve cover They'll also offer an option to go mount on your intake manifold with longer wires. If you guys are single turbo and you want to keep heat away from them, comes with spark plug wires, hardware to mount all the coils, including dielectric grease. So everything you're going to need. The goal of this video is to save you guys money as usual. I'm not trying to stir up controversy saying, hey, by the way, other companies are making are using off the shelf coils and branding them and packaging them. What's wrong with that? Right. That's a good thing. And they did it first. You know, kudos to them and anybody that wants to offer something similar, as long as they're using other people's generic parts and just piecing together a nice package, I don't see a problem with that. Competition is always good for the consumer. It may drive down price and whatnot. It's just the way things go. And I don't know if I said it already, but if you do burn out a MOSFET, it's about a $20 fix to change them all out on the early ECUs. Not a big deal. You just got to be able to solder. So now that I got all the talking points out of the way, I'm going to mount these on this rail and get ready for installation. I'm mounting them this way because if you look at this side, there's a couple little nubs to help center them from top and bottom. There we go, nice and securely mounted. Let's move to the car. Engine cover needs to come off, obviously. Five mil Allens. Using an external Torx E10 to go after these two bolts. Whenever you see blue on the bolt, that would indicate that it's a uh, one-time use. They're aluminum, but it's not a very critical application, so I'm not super worried, but technically you'd be changing those. Right here, we're gonna pull this little plastic cover off. All these wires have to come out. That's a noise filter so you don't get radio interference. There's a couple of zip ties right here.
unplug your boost solenoids. Just like that. And you can take this. We want to unclip all these. All right, so here's how it all goes together. You got this one little snap here, and then you have all these other snaps that hold it as one. That has to come out of the way because we need room to be able to bolt down the bracket. So let me go ahead and snap this together so I can store it. Now I'm gonna cable manage this stuff. I already had this, but uh, considering this is a prototype and it's about to come out, you may get this with your kit, but worst case, make sure you uh, go ahead and install some cable management, cable sheath. Next up, I'm gonna attempt to install the new spark plug wires. We're gonna have to put a little bit of grease on the sides. When you got it seated right, you'll get a distinctive click. So you basically insert them, really push down, make sure you get a distinctive click and then push them this way because you're gonna have to flatten that part as the coil sit on top of it. So I'm reinserting these bolts now. From the looks of it, for the sake of cable management, now is the time to plug these in. These are probably gonna have to live down in here. So you can actually tuck two connectors in that little void there. Be able to manage your wires that way. Make sure the one that's for the one cylinder is pointing in the right direction so you don't mix them up, that's number two. So I'm gonna do that along all these. And so there are the coils loosely mounted. I'm gonna start connecting the harnesses. I'm reconnecting the boost all lines now. None of my wires are pinched or anything. We're fine there. Okay, so cables are managed. We're in a position where we can give it a start now. All right, that sounded proper, sounded good. Um, you could have probably heard it in the video. There's a slight bit of chatter from that uh, HPFP overdrive system. I did talk to the manufacturer of that and I have the four times kit, it's way more likely on that. At, at, the, at give, certain given RPMs, you may get a bit of a chatter sound. 99.9% .9 of the time, it's not there, just as an FYI. But you can catch RPM, so I wouldn't be concerned if you're experiencing that. I had a couple people comment. Um, you don't normally hear it, but it's kind of like a throw up bearing sound from your, if you have a manual car and you push a clutch in. If I let it warm up, it would be gone. Under normal driving, it would be completely gone. It's just if you catch a certain RPM, you'll get it. So I like the way that looks, pretty clean. I'm gonna try putting the cover back on. All right, I was trying to avoid cutting this if possible, but that doesn't look to be an option. So I'm gonna slice this uh, insulation out here. It's gonna be required from the looks of it. It won't sit properly without doing that. So just naturally the engine cover can go on and look OEM, but uh, it raises up slightly as sitting on the coils, even when you remove the foam. So you're probably gonna be taking that off just for oil changes and stuff to get that cap off. If you really had to, you can push down on this and then remove it, giving it another quick start to make sure that the engine cover didn't displace anything.
done as the original cold start. Idling as you would expect. I didn't regap my plugs because they're a 0.19, but that should work nicely for my setup. All right, guys, just got back from my test drive and everything feels nice and smooth. This video shows you how to change out your coils on an N54, specifically with a set of Spool Performance LLC coils. I'm gonna put a link in the description so you guys can purchase a set if you're interested. Uh, they don't yet have it listed on their website, but you can always reach out by email to get the details from the owner on how to get a set. As I had mentioned, make sure you mention that you saw my video to get $50 off. So thanks for watching. If this is your first video, consider subscribing for more content like this. I upload regularly. Let's <laughs> go.